Every time I make one of these videos, I think it's going to be the last one, but then I end up buying more gear. So welcome to another Canadian gear video. This will be a pretty long video, so I'll timestamp the different sections down below so you can skip to the different parts, whether you're just interested in the pack, the ropes that I use, the Canadian cart, or any other parts. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, let's start with the pack. Same pack that I've been using for the last two, three years. It was in my last video. It's a rod cell. I don't quite know how to pronounce it. I think 35, 40 liters. I'll pop the exact number down below. But obviously a canyoning specific pack. Doesn't absorb water, drains water really well. You've got a few grab handles, one on the front, up the top on the inside, up the top on the outside releasable shoulder straps with a buckle, which is an important safety feature. Um, has a hip belt with some uh, attachment points here as well, which is quite good. You've got a pocket in the lid, which is handy, and obviously a nice big compartment too, with attachments on the inside, which is really quite handy, and leads us up to the next thing. What else I carry inside this pack? Over here, I've got some webbing with a carabiner and some malons. Basically, this is my anchor kit. So if we come across a cannon and we need to build an anchor, this is good for you know two, maybe three anchors or one giant anchor around a really big tree if we need to. Uh, my partner also usually carries one of these, so we've got enough material to make quite a few anchors in a cannon if needed. And this kind of just clips on the inside here as well, which is again, really, really handy, stays out of the way, easy to reach if we need to. Other things which go on the inside of the pack, I will just move across. Uh, I've got my more advanced rescue setup, so in case we need to build a three or a six to one or a more advanced hauling system or something like that, um, I've got the Petzl micro traction and the little pulley wheel here. I carry also a Crick, new bit of gear for me. Um, again, just to be able to build a more, a simpler hauling system um, or to, for ourselves or for gear. This all lives inside of my pack to try and be kind of away from the dirt and the grime as much as possible. I don't carry these things on my harness because of all the little moving parts. Other, thing inside, other things inside my pack, um, a spare ATC. Um, never know when you're gonna need one in case you lose or something happens to your primary belay device. I've got this one here. I also have a rope protector. Don't use this too often, but if there's an abseil with a sharp edge or especially if we're in a large group going over one abseil, um, I'll definitely pop this on just to save the wear and tear on the rope and be a little bit safer. Along with that, I have a couple of carabiners, which um, obviously clip all those things inside of the pack. Moving over to the harness, it is a Sing Rock harness, one that I've used now for quite a few years. Really no need to upgrade or change. It has done a great job. It's got the butt protector for my wetsuit to save that a little bit. Nice thick waist belt. Uh, your master point is facing you know, the right way for a uh, canyoning abseiling devices and you've got two gear loops one on either side rock climbing harnesses do have more gear loops but really for canyoning i found two to be more than enough maybe if you're a guide and you need your you know more rescue equipment around you uh, you might need more gear loops but i've got that stuff in my pack and the two gear loops basically hold my personal rescue stuff without a problem uh, moving over to the right hand side, what I've got attached, uh, figure eight. My preferred anchor setup is a contingency releasable anchor, so, and I like to do that with a figure eight, so that's always attached. VT Prusik to set up, you know, one of those third hands. Um, a spare lightweight carabiner. Over on the master point, I have a Critter 2, my preferred abseiling device. Very easy to add or remove friction, tie it off. Um, just a great, great little abseiling device. I also have a PAS here, dynamic PAS, personal anchor system um, attached. I prefer the looped version rather than kind of like an adjustable from one point, personal preference, and just a two-way carabiner to attach to things. 
On the right hand side, I've got another VT Prusik, so I can set this up to help me, you know, ascend, whether it be a single or a double rope. Um, I've got a tib lock with um, some webbing here. That's more so for ascending a single rope and another lightweight carabiner. So all on here, I have, you know, everything I need to basically get me up and down ropes. The other rescue stuff will make that a lot easier, but I prefer to have it in the pack because I don't use it very often and anything I need in case of an emergency is right here. All right, let's move on over to the ropes. Um, I've got a few different ropes. Definitely, you only need one rope, but over the years, you kind of acquire a few more. So I'll go through the ones I have. I started off with this nine point something millimeter rope at 60 meters. It's now 52 after a few incidents which needed it to be cut. Uh, great rope, it's kind of my beginner rope because of the thickness, it runs a little bit slower through the devices, so you generally have a little bit more control um, when going down. So when taking new people um, or people with very little experience, I'll take this rope. It is heavier than my other ropes, but uh, again, it's generally kind of safer for new people, and that's why I kind of got it in the first place. So a good all around rope and not too expensive. My second rope is this one over here. It's a eight millimeter rope. It's at 70 meters, so a little bit longer, uh, but because it's thinner and made from different material, um, it's actually more lightweight than my 52 meter rope. It runs a lot faster, which when you're brand new isn't great, but when you've got a little bit more experience and a device which you know how to adjust the friction for, um, it's actually a really nice rope to use. It's a little bit more kind of uh, flexible as well, nicer to handle, um, and just a really, really awesome rope. I'll pop the names down below of all these ropes um, as well. So this was kind of my second purchase, you know, my do-it-all, uh, more experienced type rope, um, and absolutely love it. This rope over here is actually about 25 meters from memory. Uh, it is also a eight millimeter rope. It's much more a specialized type rope in terms of we're going into a canyon that I already know or that's got really good track notes. And I know there's not gonna be an abseil that's gonna be longer than 20 meters. Whereas if I'm not too sure, I'll take the um, 70 meter rope. But being at you know 25 meters, it's significantly lighter than a rope at 70 meters. Obviously, you can um, or you can double up on the rope, so that way I'll only have about 12 meters to abseil. Um, but if I want to use the full 25 meters of this rope, um, I take this pull cord, which is a six millimeter cord, uh, polyester, I think from memory, so I can basically rig it up. So I've got the full 25 meters of that rope and then the pull cord for um, to bring the rope down. Alternatively, uh, the other thing I carry is a fiddle stick. So this fiddle stick I think is about 65 uh, meters. So it's really good if we wanna use the longer rope. You know, if we have a 40, 50, 60 meter basically abseil and we wanna use the full length of that, um, that longer rope, we can rig it up with the fiddle stick. They're also a good bit of fun to use. So um, really good bit of kit. Doesn't come with me all the time. If I'm doing a canyon and I know I'm not gonna use it, um, then I'll leave it at home. But more often than not, it does go inside my pack. In terms of how I carry the ropes, I use this Imlay rope silo. Um, it's rated nine millimeters at 60 meters. So it'll fit this red one reasonably well, uh, but it fits the 70 meter uh, eight millimeter rope without a problem, with actually room to spare. It's amazing how much of a difference that one millimeter in rope thickness actually makes. So this is kind of my go-to when I use the, you know, the 60, now 52, or the 70 meter rope. When I'm just taking this 25 meter rope, I don't take a rope bag. I just basically coil it up on the spot, chuck it in the bag and it's good to go. Um, and this cord here lives inside this blue bag there. When it comes to helmets, uh, last time I made one of these videos, I showed the Petzl one, but I do, or I have recently been taking this Decathlon one. Um, it's got my video set up on it for my 360 cam, so it's just kind of been easier. With that, I have my whistle, which can just kind of go hitch onto the chin straps there. And then recently, there's the Black Diamond Storm, which I needed in the last canyon since we had some P 
pitch black caverns in there, which was really, really cool. But yeah, the black diamond storm, um, awesome little headlamp, which can strap onto the helmet. All right, last few things. Basically what I wear inside the canyon, what I video the adventures with, and how I keep things dry. Starting off with the wetsuit. Uh, my main wetsuit is a two, three millimeter surf wetsuit. So two millimeters on the sleeves and the pants, three millimeters um, on the torso. It's warm enough most of the time for most of the canyons, but if we're doing something in winter or it's really, really cold, um, I've got a rashi basically here, which is an extra millimeter, millimeter and a half with a fleece inside, so that adds a bit of warmth. And I've got um, same thing for the bottom, just basically an extra millimeter, millimeter and a half with fleece on the inside. Stop it, stop it. Don't chew my things. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go play with your toys. For my feet, I have got wetsuit socks. Um, they do make a good bit of difference, so they go with me for most canyons as well. Um, the other thing that goes on my feet are my shoes. Um, Previously, I've just used old joggers, but I found that I slip and slide all over the place. So just recently, I invested in some actual canyoning shoes. These are the La Sportiva. Um, I'll, put, I'll put the full name down the bottom here. Only used them once, and the difference was huge. Um, a lot, lot more grip. I don't generally like boots. I prefer more simple, minimalist type footwear, uh, but these, are, these were absolutely fantastic. Uh, not a lot of info on the internet about these, so after a few more goes, I may, might make a full review video. But yeah, the uh, difference between um, normal joggers and something like this was, was really, really noticeable. So they are brand new to me, but they will definitely be coming on every single trip. In case it gets really cold as well, I carry um, basically this El Cheapo rain jacket. It's just plastic, it does not breathe, so it retains the heat really, really well. Um, also doubles as a bit of a, you know, here I am type thing in an emergency, makes me nice and visible, uh, but also adds a little bit of extra warmth. Inside of this drum, so this is what I use to keep everything dry. Um, I will carry also thermals for the most part uh, in most canyons, especially the longer ones, in case we get you know benighted, have to stay the night. Um, I've got something warm and dry to change into. Other things that will go in here is my first aid kit, uh, which includes a PLB and also the Garmin InReach. Uh, it also includes a lighter, again, to make a small fire in case we get uh, benighted and have to spend the night there, and also includes snacks and things like that. Uh, other things, uh, I carry water inside this hydro pack, uh, hydro pack bladder. Um, I'll usually have a filter as well. I don't have it here with me at the moment. Uh, but again, I can just make more water in case we're there for a longer period of time. The way I keep my gear dry, so um, pretty simple apart from the drum there, which I find works much, much better than any type of, you know, those hard waterproof bags which you roll. They always get water in there for me, uh, whereas this has been absolutely bulletproof. Uh, but I use this Summit, um, it's called Cedar Summit, a bag for maps and documents and things like that. Um, this Pelican case for my phone, and I've got some more overboard, um, where's my radio? More of this, more of these are overboard uh, type waterproof uh, bags as well, which I can keep my phone in there or other documents and things like that. Documents, like I carry documents, um, but car keys, whatever. The way I make these videos, uh, two main camera systems, GoPro, which I usually strap onto my uh, pack with one of those alligator clip things, and my Insta360 X2 goes on top of my helmet. So those have been kind of the two things I've been making the videos with. And just before I finish up, the other thing I forgot to mention is my gloves. Just a really cheap, simple pair from Bunnings, which is a local hardware brand here. 20, 30 bucks. Just, they just fit the best. So just nice and simple. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of the gear, just leave it down below and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you have any suggestions for any cool Canon gear, also leave it down below. 
because no doubt I will be making another one of these videos next year. But until then, thanks for watching. Bye.